I've automated my entire invoice management process with this simple AI automation. I used to spend hundreds of dollars per month on invoice management software and countless hours manually entering invoice data, reconciling payments and tracking expenses across multiple platforms. It really is a pain, but not anymore. In this video, I'll show you exactly how I built this AI automation on NAN step-by-step step, so that you can build something similar for yourself and your business. But before that, let me show you exactly what it can do. So we're going to jump into the school community. So it's school.com slash scrapes, and you go into the classroom and in the template library section, if we click on that, we're going to go down to business use cases and we'll click on invoice management. And you can see the templates right here. What we can do is open that and there'll be an option to download that there. We'll hit download. And then when you open it up inside NAN, it's going to look something like this. And then we're going to run that here by clicking test workflow. We've already got a test in here. And what it's doing is it's monitoring our Google Drive folder where all of our attachments are uploaded from our email. It's then going to extract all the data from those documents into a format where we can pass it to the AI automation. We're then going to process them just one at a time so that it's nice and easy for the AI to recognize which one it's processing. And then it's going to be updated inside of our Airtable where it's put all this data. So what it's going to do is put in all of the details of the invoice so that every month we can come in here and we can see exactly what invoices we've received and reconcile those. It updates by invoice number, so it will never put in duplicate invoices. It gives us a description around what the invoice is actually for. So you can see here, this is for credit usage between the period of Jan 2nd to Feb 2nd. And it's interpreted that from the, just the invoice attachment. It's got a payment date on here, an invoice date, and then actually links back to our Google Drive folder where we can open up the invoice directly and just double check that that is correct. So we're gonna go through step-by-step step now exactly how this automation works. So the first section is around monitoring our Google Drive. So we've set up an attachments folder within our Google Drive, just under my automations folder. And this essentially is where we're gonna upload our attachments. So you can see the example we used where we've uploaded a PDF of an invoice that I've received via email. If you're looking for an automation that wants to automatically upload your attachments to a certain folder, check out my last video around managing my email inbox, it automatically uploads all of my attachments to this folder so that I don't have to manually upload them. So that's gonna monitor our Google Drive folder every single minute. So we're just gonna go in here, have it on every minute, and it will just poll for new files that are put into that folder every minute. We're then gonna attach it to the correct folder. So for me, that's attachments. And then what we're doing is actually grabbing the file. So once it's uploaded, we need to download that file so that it's in our NA environment. So we've got a Google Drive node here, which I've called get file. And all that's doing is downloading from the ID that's passed through the trigger. So you can see the file on the right hand side here. We're then going to extract that data. So to get it into the LLM or the AI node, what we need is to put that data in a usable format. So that's usually Markdown or plain text. So here we're just converting all of the document data from a PDF into plain text so that we can format it and process it in our AI node. So we're then going to format it. This looks more complicated than it is, but I've just used a code node to effectively strip out all of the characters and new lines that we don't want to pass through to our AI node. And the reason we want to strip out those is because actually, if we remove all of the special characters, apart from things like numbers, periods, and commas, then it makes it a much cleaner set of data and reduces our token usage, stops the AI node from erroring on certain characters. So we're actually just stripping out all the characters to make it really clean, plain text. And you can see on the right hand side here exactly what it looks like. So to us, it looks like a massive paragraph of, of nonsense because it's essentially converted everything in an invoice. And we've seen the invoice here into plain text so that our AI node can digest that and work out exactly the details of the invoice. 
We've then got a loop node. I think it generally performs better if you process one document at a time. So I've decided to put this loop node in so that if we get multiple attachments in the same minute, we're just going to process them individually. What we're then doing is extracting key information. So this is where the complex prompting comes in and actually the real special source of this automation. If we go into extract data LLM, this is just an LLM chain node. But what we've done is given it specific instructions in the prompt that we've defined below. So just to give you an overview of that prompt here, we've said given the following invoice, and then we've attached that invoice here from our previous inputs. So what we've done is so what we've done is pull from the process one loop node. We've actually just pulled across the text, which we can see on the right hand side is all of the text that we've stripped out the special characters of. And then what I've done is just reference it by its node name. And that's just a, a future proof. So in the prompt here, we've said given the following invoice, and then we've passed the invoice as an attachment or the invoice text, extract the following information. If you cannot find the information for a specific item, then leave it blank. So basically don't make up information because we don't want fake information uh, making it to our air table. So to get the input specifically, all you need to do is drag and drop this across here. And you can see this is the text that we are processing from the previous node, which was our loop node. And all I've done to change that is reference the node by its name, process one, dot item, dot JSON, dot text. I tend to do this in my automations because if you introduce nodes further along the chain, then JSON.txt only references the last node. So it can actually break your automation. This is a better way to future-proof it if you focus on the node name. We've then asked it to pull specific information and given it details around those. So we've asked it to pull the description, which is a short one to two line description, and then given it example. Always performs much better when you give it examples. We've then given it a type. So we want to know whether it's monthly recurring, annual recurring, or single payment. So we know if we're expecting it the following month. We've then pulled out additional information around our invoice date, and sometimes the payment date is different. And you can see that I've specified whether something is required next to it, and then it will continue to look for those things until it gets them. We've then got some information around supplier name and supplier identification number, but at the moment we're not actually tracking that in our Airtable, but this enables you to track that if you wanted to. One important thing that makes this an agent and not just an automation is that the LLM or the AI node is looking for additional important information so with traditional automations, you'd be able to pull exact information from the PDF or the attachment. But actually what we're telling it to do is read the whole text. If there's any additional information that I might find important, then pull that into an additional information column. And that could be things around payment terms, bank account details, discount terms. So some things that are actually really painful to do when you've set up invoicing in the past and actually you're looking through to find the bank account details this will actually pull those details when it can and put that in that additional information column and you can see down here on the right is our actual input where we've got all of the information from that invoice that it's then analyzing and extracting these terms from we've then because we're putting it in the air table in a very specific format and i'll show you again the invoice number description, invoice date. So we know exactly what fields we want to extract. And therefore, we've used a structured output parser. So within the LLM chain, you can require a specific output format. And what we've done is just put in a JSON schema that tells it exactly which fields it needs to produce every time, as well as all of the other fields that it should look for and their data types. When the AI node runs, it will aim to output in this exact format. And if it doesn't output in this exact format, it will not let it continue until it does, which means we get consistent invoice details 
into our Airtable, which makes it really reliable and makes it almost like your own invoice management software, except you're not having to pay the expensive prices for that invoice management software. It's under your control. You can add things if you want to. It's a really, really powerful automation. So we can see that it has output all of the information that we've asked for. And where some are empty, it's actually just returned empty values, which is absolutely fine. It's even pulled things like the address, the customer name, et cetera, out there. All we're doing then is updating the financials table. So we've got an Airtable node, which creates or updates, and I've told it to match on the column of invoice number. And the reason I've done that, if you've done a lot of invoice reconciliation, you'll know that you're commonly sent multiple invoices by suppliers with the same invoice number. This just strips out the chance of it putting that invoice in twice. And actually every time it will check the invoice number and either update the record or not put it in at all. We've then just pulled all of the information from our output and drag and dropped it inside here. Again, instead of the JSON dot, I've referenced the specific node name because that's more future proof. And all of that information is then put into our air table where we're able on a monthly basis or weekly basis or daily basis, if, if you're doing that, to go to our Airtable and see exactly what we've purchased and get all the information, but also link directly back to the file itself. So it's like a self-contained invoice management software that you can freely update yourself. Inside the template itself, we've got some general information here and all of the templates that I produce have this general information, but in particular, you can copy the Airtable from this base, I've got a video run through showing you exactly how you copy the Airtable and set up your access token if you've never set up an Airtable before. Thanks for watching.